Hello everyone, this is Joe here with Joe Talks, and today we are going to do a video that is going to be tailored more towards uh, high school students, and particularly uh, juniors and high uh, juniors and seniors in high school that are getting ready to graduate and uh, are looking at different colleges that they might want to go to. And uh, within that kind of subset of students, I'm really kind of directing this more towards students that want to go into the engineering fields or the engineering technology fields. And kind of making this video a little bit based off of uh, my experience that I had when I was going to college, um, I had kind of a unique experience. And I'm not gonna name any specific colleges in this video just uh, for privacy, but um, as far as my experience went, I went to a school and majored in automotive technology and then I graduated and went on to get a master's degree in engineering technology. And then I went back to school at a different university and got a degree in mechanical engineering. And so the focus of this video and the things I want to talk about are the differences between an engineering degree and an engineering technology degree. And so... There's probably a lot of students out there that were uh, similar to me, kind of grew up maybe in a small town or whatever, uh, and didn't quite understand those differences between engineering and engineering technology. And uh, what young students need to understand is th those two programs, although they sound very similar, they are not the same, and they're not going to qualify you to get the same jobs out in the job market. Now, I say that kind of loosely because there is a lot of overlap and there's always exceptions to every rule, but I'm saying in general, uh, if you have an engineering technology degree, that is not going to qualify you for a job in an engineering field. And specifically, uh, when we talk about engineering programs, we often refer to uh, their accreditation so you'll oftentimes if you're out looking at schools you'll see uh, a comment or a post about how a program is ABET accredited right and so ABET accreditation is the program that uh, kind of certifies different universities and different college programs and um, so traditionally you would hear an engineering degree being ABET accredited right and so uh, if you go out and you look at uh, po job postings like on Indeed or CareerFinder or whatever, you're often going to see one of the requirements that will be that you must have an engineering degree from an ABET accredited university. And so uh, one of the first things you need to understand is there's different types of ABET accreditation. And so you can go to... This website called ABET Accreditation, and you can look at uh, all of the different requirements that schools need to get ABET accredited. Uh, but one of the things I really want to look at and want engineering students to look at and recognize is that there is uh, different ABET accreditations for an engineering program and different ABET accreditations for an engineering technology program. So there's actually part of this website will go in and explain kind of in detail how there is a difference between those two. And what you need to recognize is that a lot of these colleges and universities will kind of throw that term ABET accreditation around. Uh, and I don't want to say this as if they're being devious in nature, but to kind of it almost feels like they're trying to fool you into thinking that their program may offer something that it doesn't. So, uh, so I'm, I want to caution you when you go to these universities that offer engineering technology programs. You know, uh, a lot of these programs are good. I, I don't want to say that an engineering technology program is not good as compared to an engineering program, but you really need to understand that those two those two programs don't don't certify or I don't say certify you but they don't qualify you when you get out into the workforce they don't carry the same weight and so 
a lot of times these programs offering engineering technology degrees will kind of make their programs sound like they will qualify you for engineering jobs in the workplace when in reality uh, they don't. Those programs and engineering technology degree is really going to qualify you for an engineering technician role. Probably not necessarily an engineering role. But again, like I said, there's always exceptions to every rule, right? This doesn't include that scenario where a guy or girl worked at a manufacturing plant since they were 17 and worked their way up and were offered a role with a technology degree and got an engineering position, right? Doesn't include that. You know, there's plenty of, uh, specific, specifically in manufacturing, there's lots of production plants all throughout the nation that are in small towns, small communities, where there may not be a large population of degreed engineers where they would probably accept an engineering technology degree to fill an engineering role. But when you get into a, a major city, you know, if you get into Chicago, New York, you know, anywhere where there's a large population, th there's going to be a lot more competition for those engineering roles. And people with engineering degrees are usually going to win out over people with engineering technology degrees. And so you need to be aware of that. And so when these schools promise you the world saying their engineering technology degrees will prepare you for the engineering workforce, well, the skills that they teach you, I mean, I'm not saying they're bad. When I was in the engineering technology program, I learned a lot of good skills. I, I'm not saying that the professors aren't highly intelligent and that you're not getting good uh, training and, and information. The problem is when you get out in the workforce, you know, you go to apply for a job somewhere and you've got some guy or gal sitting in the HR department that doesn't recognize the difference. And when corporate mandates that, oh, this role requires an ABET accredited engineering degree, well, guess what? Usually those HR managers are putting your resume in a the do not accept pile because they see engineering technology, right? And so uh, even though you may be every bit of as uh, capable of doing that role, oftentimes you're not going to get into that slot just because you don't have that engineering degree. So uh, now I, I'm not trying to advocate one or the other, right? You need to choose whatever program best fits your career path and the things you want to do you know engineering technology is really more of that hands-on type stuff you're doing a lot of more uh kind of in the trenches you're actually picking up the tools and actually doing work oftentimes whereas the engineer is going to be kind of behind a desk a little bit more you know oftentimes not always right again it's always always exceptions but i'm talking thirty thousand foot view here Engineers are going to be more in that design development type of role, whereas engineering technologists are usually implementing initiatives, right? You're doing the legwork, you're out on the production floor, you're in the trenches doing the work, whereas the engineer is kind of doing the design work, right? And so you need to understand the differences in between those two roles. They're not the same, even though that university that's trying to sell you on that engineering technology degree again they're going to promise you the world they're going to say oh yeah it prepares you all they're the same we're a bet accredited we're engineering technology right they mumble out the technology right they'll do everything they can to make you feel like their program is competitive with an engineering a bet accredited engineering program when in reality, they are absolutely not the same. They are completely different animals. And you need to understand that so that when you are out there and you are deciding what university you want to go to, you need to be able to make an educated decision, right? You need to understand what you're getting yourself into. And unfortunately, the way that a lot of these university programs work, they know once they get you in there, right once you're enrolled they got you right and so that's why they'll promise you the world and unfortunately a lot of times for people it isn't until you're in your sophomore junior or even senior year until you kind of see the writing on the wall that maybe this program you're in is not quite everything it was hyped up to be and uh you know when i found myself in that position you know i've been in the engineering field now for over 20 years 
but uh, I went to a university. I got an undergraduate degree in that technology field, even got a master's degree in that technology field. And when I graduated, of course, this was right after 9-11, so take that into, a, in, into an account. But I could not find a job anywhere. No one would even entertain the idea of hiring me into an engineering role. And after kind of working some entry-level jobs for about a year, I decided, you know, I really need that engineering degree. And when I went back and got that engineering degree, the floodgates opened. Opportunities were just everywhere. And ironically, when I was in my engineering program, I worked part-time as a co-op. And I made almost as much money working part-time as an engineering co-op as I did working full-time with really one of the only jobs I could find with that technology degree. So uh, obviously things have changed a lot. You know, the, the work field, those dynamics change over time. Like I said, that's been 20 years ago. A lot of things are different, but uh, you really, I, this video is just meant to kind of open your eyes and say, hey, you know, understand that these are not the same engineering anything that says engineering degree and anything that says engineering technology or applied science as compared to a science those are not the same right and so there are a few tells you can look for so if you look at your program you know if you're kind of unsure if this one program is or isn't you know if you don't have the ability to kind of deep dive their credentials a few things to look for right so if you're going to an ABET accredited engineering degree, right, it doesn't matter where in the United States, you will have to take Calculus 1, Calculus 2, Calculus 3, and differential equations, right? Those are some minimum requirements of mathematics in any kind of engineering program, right? And you compare that to an engineering technology degree, oftentimes they only require college algebra, right? Maybe a trigonometry class. Uh, sometimes maybe even a business calculus, right? And so those are uh, still science-based or math-based, but they're nowhere near as rigorous as the math and science you're going to need for an engineering degree, right? And so kind of the same thing along those lines, you look at your physics programs, right? So your technology degree are going to require college physics, which is just a uh, usually a three-hour physics program, maybe with a lab. Whereas uh, engineering degrees are going to require university physics, right? That is a five-hour five semester uh, program with a lab, right? Much more intensive. It's uh, calculus-based as opposed to uh, college physics, which is really kind of a general physics class for all students, regardless of what uh, college they're in, to take. Um, again, same thing, chemistry engineering is going to always require a five-hour chemistry with a lab class those types of things right so those are just some quick tells if you're looking at a program and and they've got some buzzwords going around and you're not real sure those are just some just quick things down and dirty you can look at and say does it require these yes or no if they do it's probably more engineering oriented whereas if they don't it's probably more technology oriented so Anyway, that is my talk for today. Again, this is for those uh, young students out there that are trying to decide what career path they want to go in, what school they want to go to. Uh, hopefully this might help shed some light on some of those details and help you make a more informed decision, right? Again, I'm not trying to steer you down one path or the other. Both of those programs, I mean, in their own right, they're good for what they are. But as the uh, consumer of those products, <laughs> you know, the university program is the product you're paying for. You need to be uh, as informed and fully informed as you can be about what they are and what you're paying not only your money towards, but your time, right? Because these things take a lot of time. So anyway, I hope this helps. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Help me out. And uh, if you have any questions or if you are a young student looking to go into the engineering field, always feel free to send me a message. I would be happy to mentor or answer any questions or if you need any advice, by all means. Um, like I said, I've been through both programs. I've been through a bachelor and master's level at the technology degree. I've been to bachelor's degree at 
one of the top ranked engineering programs in my state and I've been in uh, engineering field you know, particularly in manufacturing uh, machine oriented uh, it's kind of where my specialties lie uh, and lately it's been more SCADA development so a lot more computer programming type stuff but uh, anyway a lot of that background and anything I can do to help anyone out there uh, any questions please comment send me a questions I would be more than happy to give out advice uh, based off of my personal experiences so all right that's all I have and uh, till the next one all right. thank you